Alright, hello guys. Uh, today we're going to be doing this amazingly cool integral, integral from 0 to infinity of ln x over x squared plus 1 squared dx. Um, we're going to use contour integration to solve this. There's lots of different ways you could do this, but that's the method we're going to use today. Now before we start, I'm going to give a huge shout out to Maths505, one of my favorite YouTubers by far. And um, on the day of this recording, he just, um, this is where I got the integral from one of his videos where he used a Feynman's trick to solve it. But today we're going to use another method and solve contour, solve it using contour integration. So let's look at our method here. We're going to use this contour integral. Now we're going to use a classic keyhole contour um, with a semicircle in the upper half plane. So that just looks like this. Um, we're going to go and we're avoiding the origin because of that nasty lnz, which becomes quite frustrating to deal with at zero. And of course, looking at the bottom here, our poles are going to be at negative i and positive i, so we only have to worry about this one. And take note that since this is all squared, this is going to be a pole of order two. And of course, we're also avoiding this. So um, our integral is going to be equal to, um, I'll call this big semicircle uppercase gamma. Um, this radius, outer radius is going to be big R. This inner radius is going to be epsilon. So we'll be taking the limit as epsilon goes to zero and R goes to infinity. So we'll call this big gamma. We'll call this inner circle little gamma. So this is going to be equal to big gamma plus little gamma plus um, the integral of our normal function from um, epsilon to r plus the integral, um, this one right here, from negative r to negative epsilon. So first I want to point out that this one, as epsilon goes to zero and r goes to infinity, this is going to become the original integral that we had. So we're just going to call that i. And that's what we're looking for. And of course all of this is going to be equal to 2 pi r times the sum of the residues which in this case, we just have one residue that we have to calculate. Uh, so let's get started. All right, so the first one we are going to look at, is we're going to look at this big semicircular contour or integral that goes around here. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to parameterize it so that we can um, figure it out using normal methods. So we're going to say um, z equals big R e to the i theta. As theta varies from 0 to pi, z is going to travel this way, so that's perfect. And then in that case, dz is going to equal i r e to the i theta. And if we plug that right back into our integral, we're going to get the integral from 0 to pi of ln r e to the i theta, i r e to the i theta over r squared e to the 2i theta plus 1 squared d theta. And so in order to um, solve this, we're going to take the absolute value of this integral. And we know that this is less than or equal to the absolute, um, the integral of the absolute value. So when we take the absolute value, we don't have to worry about e to the i theta because that's uh, the absolute value of e to the i theta is always one and of course i. So we're just going to leave this as r ln r e to the i theta over r squared e to the 2i theta plus 1 squared all d theta. And if we look at this ln r e to the i theta, um, we can split this up into ln r plus ln e to the i theta. But in that case, um, ln e to the i theta is just i theta. So we're going to say that this is the same thing as r ln r plus r i theta over r squared e to the 2i theta plus 1 squared d theta. Now since our integral is going from 0 to, 0 to pi, we have a finite integrand. And as you can see inside the integrand here, we have our r squared in the bottom and then another squared. So that's going to be on the order of r to the fourth. And in the top, we have r times ln r and uh, plus r times some constant. So obviously, r and r to the fourth, that's going to go 
on the order of 1 over r cubed, so that's just going to go to 0. And ln r um, grows much more slowly than r over um, than r to the fourth, of course, so r ln r is also going to disappear, and that's going to go to 0. So this whole integral is going to go straight to 0. Now, that's not a very rigorous proof, um, but we don't want to waste too much time here on these relatively trivial integrals, uh, parts of the integral. So we're going to move on to the inner semicircular contour. So we're going to do a very similar thing here. We're going to look at the um, inner contour here. So that's this one where the radius is epsilon. So we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to parameterize z equals epsilon e to the i theta. And then dz is going to equal i epsilon e to the i theta, d theta. So our integral is going to become 0 to pi ln, um, ln epsilon plus i theta, right, times um, i epsilon e to the i theta, all over epsilon squared e to the i theta. 2i theta plus 1 squared d theta. Now, um, since we're taking the limit as epsilon goes to 0, this whole part on the bottom is just going to become 1, right? So this is going to go to 1. And again, we're going to take the absolute value, and we're going to say that this is less than, or I'm sorry, the absolute value outside the integral. This is less than the absolute value inside the integral. It's less than the absolute value from 0 to pi. Um, of so when we take the absolute value, this and this are going to disappear just like they did last time. So we have epsilon ln epsilon plus i theta epsilon over 1 d theta. Now, in the case of um, epsilon ln epsilon, of course, the limit as epsilon ln epsilon goes to zero, which we can show just using Le Hopital's rule. We can say um, ln epsilon 1 over epsilon, and then as epsilon goes to zero. This is a infinity over infinity situation, so we'll take the derivative on the top and bottom. We're going to have 1 over epsilon, negative 1 over epsilon squared. And that's just going to be um, limit as epsilon goes to 0 of negative epsilon, which is 0. So that part goes to 0, and of course, since epsilon goes to 0, this part is also going to go to 0, since theta only reaches 2 pi, or reaches pi. So this whole part of the integral is also going to go to 0. Now we're going to deal with um, the negative leg of the integral. So if we look at our whole contour, we know that this part we don't have to worry about this part. We don't have to worry about um, this one is our original integral. Now we have to worry about this. So we have the integral from negative r to negative epsilon of um, well, actually we're on the real axis. So I'm going to use x here, ln x of um, x squared plus one squared dx. And of course, as epsilon goes to zero and um, r goes to infinity, we're going to have this be the integral from negative infinity to 0 of ln x over x squared plus 1 squared dx. Now, in order to make this a lot easier, we're just going to we're going to um, we're going to switch x to um, like negative t or something, and that will help us um, reach 0 to infinity and hopefully we convert this back into the original integral. So, I'm going to say x equals negative t dx equals uh, negative dt. So, when we do this, we're going to have integral from infinity to 0, ln negative t, and since we have x squared, it's just going to end up t squared plus 1 squared, negative dt. Now I'll just move this negative sign in, and I'll switch my bounds here. So this will end up just being dt, and my bounds will be flipped. Now this looks almost exactly the same as our original integral. The only thing that's missing is um, we also do have to deal with this negative sign. And so, of course, ln negative t is just ln negative 1 plus ln t. So as we, um, in the complex world, when we have ln negative 1, that's going to be over here, right? So our argument is going to be pi, and the magnitude of 1 is just 1. So ln negative 1 is going to equal i pi um, 
plus lnt, of course. So we can convert this to i pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over t squared plus 1 squared dt plus the integral from 0 to infinity of ln t over t squared plus 1 squared is just i. Okay, now let's clear some space away here. So now we have to solve this integral. So clearly since we have this t squared plus 1, the obvious thing to do, substitute t equals tangent theta, uh, dt equals secant squared theta, d theta, then we're going to have the integral from 0 to pi over 2, because that's when tangent of theta reaches infinity, of 1 over, now t squared plus 1 is going to be tangent squared plus 1, so that's going to be secant squared of theta, and of course all of that squared is going to be secant to the fourth of theta, and then on the top we're going to have secant squared theta d theta. So this is going to cancel to just be squared on the bottom. So we're going to have i pi times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine squared theta d theta. Now this is a pretty simple integral. We're just going to use um, trig substitute. We're just going to use a trig identity. So we're going to end up with i pi times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 half plus cosine of 2 theta over 2. Now this is just a pretty classic trig identity. Cosine squared of theta equals 1 half plus cosine of 2 theta over 2 d theta. Now we're just going to integrate this. So we're going to have i pi 1 half theta plus sine of 2 theta over 4 evaluated at pi over 2 and 0. So um, when we evaluate this, we're just going to end up with i pi times 1 half times pi over 2. So that's going to be uh, i pi times pi over 4. And for this other one, sine of pi is just 0 and sine of 0 is also 0, so we don't need to worry about that. That's just going to go to 0. So we're going to have i pi um, times pi over 4 or i pi squared over 4. And so the total value of our um, left side of our um, real axis here is going to be i pi squared over 4 plus i. All right, now the next step is we're going to have to actually evaluate our residues because we've dealt with all four regions of our contour. Now we're just going to find the total value of the contour integral. Okay, so in order to evaluate the residues, um, what we're going to do is just 2 pi i. And usually what we would do with a first order residue is we would just multiply by um, z minus z0 and then find the limit as uh, z goes to that value. But that's not going to work here because we have a second order residue. So what we actually have to do is we have to multiply um, by z minus z0 squared and then take the first derivative and divide by 1 factorial. Um, if it was a third order, we would divide by 2 factorial and take the second derivative and so on and so forth. That's just how Cauchy's residue theorem goes. Um, in this case, we're not going to worry about 1 factorial because that's just 1. So let's write this as the limit as z goes to i, because that's where our pole is, of um, the derivative with respect to z of z minus i squared times ln z over z squared plus 1 squared. Okay, so z minus i squared is going to cancel in the top and bottom, right? And on the bottom, all we're going to be left with is, um, I don't have space here, but it's going to be z plus i squared because that's our other um, pole. So we have 2 pi i times the limit as z goes to i of ln z, uh, or I should say d over dz, ln z over z plus i squared. Now we're going to just take the derivative, use the product rule, 2 pi i times the limit as z goes to i of 1 over z, z plus i squared. And then we're going to end up with minus 2 I believe ln z over z plus i cubed. 
Now, in this case, I think we can just plug in z equals i to finish solving this. So 2 pi i times uh, 1 over i is the same thing as a negative i, so I'm going to write that right there. And z plus i, uh, that's going to be 2i squared. So 2i squared is just negative 4. Um, and then for the other part, we're going to end up with um, minus 2 ln of i. Um, i is just on the, um, if you look at the complex plane, it's right here. So, and its magnitude is just 1. So the natural log of i is just going to be uh, pi over 2, i pi over 2. So 2 times i pi over 2. So I'll just write i pi. And then z plus i is 2i. 2i um, two cubed is going to be negative 8i, I believe. Right? Yeah. OK. And so these negative signs are going to cancel. These i's are going to cancel. And so what we're going to end up with is uh, these negative signs cancel as well. 2 pi i times um, i over 4 is just going to be um, negative pi over 2. And this other one is going to be plus i pi squared over 4, because we have an 8 in the bottom here and a 2 right here. And so this is the total value of our integral. Now all that's left to do is add all our parts together. So all we have to do now is add everything together. So the total value of our, I'm um, sorry, wait, let me, yeah, so our contour integral is equal to negative pi over 2 plus i pi squared over 4, which is equal to, um, so remember our gamma integrals both went to 0, so we don't need to worry about those. And then we have um, our right side integral was just equal to i, our left side integral was equal to i plus i pi squared over 4. And voila, those nasty imaginary numbers are going to cancel on each side. And what we're going to be left with is 2i equals negative pi over 2. Divide by 2 on both sides, and our integral is negative pi over 4. And that's our answer. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, I had a lot of fun this video, and I hope to see you on the next one.